Today, we're going to talk about the patient who presents with gross hematuria. So let's go ahead and get started. These patients can be quite challenging. And like all chief complaints, we want to start by building our differential diagnosis. To do that, I find that thinking about the GU anatomy really helps me build my differential for patients with gross hematuria. So here's our anatomy. You got your kidneys, your ureters, your bladder, your prostate, and your urethra. I was going to try to draw this live, but I'm not that good of an artist, and what we have here took me an hour, so yeah, there it is. Okay, so let's get back to the medicine. Uh, the first place we'll start will be the kidney. Maybe your patient had a nephritic syndrome, or there's a malignancy, or potentially there was trauma that could be causing the patient um, the patient's gross hematuria. Down at the ureter, maybe there is a kidney stone that's causing the patient's gross hematuria. At the level of the bladder, maybe the patient has a UTI that's causing hemorrhagic cystitis, or again, maybe there's another malignancy that could be causing the bleeding. Maybe the patient has bleeding from his prostatic vessels. And finally, maybe there was some urethral trauma. Now that we've thought of our differential diagnosis, we can move on to the history. You'll specifically want to ask if the patient sees blood at the beginning of the stream the end of the stream, or throughout the stream. If the bleeding is at the beginning of the stream, you want to consider disease at the urethra. If it's at the end of the stream, you want to consider disease at the bladder neck, or the prostatic urethra. If it's throughout, you want to consider disease of the kidney. The ureter. Or the bladder. When you do your physical exam, be sure to look for blood at the meatus. or any obvious external lesions. For your workup, you want to order a CBC to make sure the patient is not anemic, coags, to make sure that the patient is not anticoagulated, a UA to make sure that the patient is not having a UTI, a basic metabolic panel to assess the patient's creatinine as well as to make sure they're not uremic as that may inhibit platelet aggregation. And if the patient is really bleeding, you'd want to order a type and cross and get them ready for transfusion. I just want to add that for the CBC, in addition to getting it to see if the patient is anemic, you'll also want to get it to see if the patient has thrombocytopenia as well. Now let's go to our management algorithm. The first question to ask is if the patient is retaining urine. To do this, measure a PVR. If the answer to that is no, then you can potentially DC the patient home if the rest of the workup is negative and there are no other wild cards. You would also want to make sure that the patient could be seen by a urologist as an outpatient and be able to get a cystoscopy if needed. If the answer to this question is yes, then you'll want to put in a Foley. After the Foley is in, you'll want to irrigate the bladder 
with at least one to two liters. The goal of the irrigation is to get the urine to be clear. If you are able to get it clear, the patient can be de-seed home after an observation period where they do not develop gross hematuria again. The patient would be sent home with the Foley and would have a voiding trial as an outpatient. Now, in order for the patient to be de-seed home, the urine has to stay clear, meaning it can't become a Kool-Aid pinkish color again. If it does become that Kool-Aid color, then they've failed this observation period. If you can't get the urine to be clear, after irrigation, or if the patient fails the observation period, you'll want to try to irrigate one more time. If at this point you have no luck, you'll need to admit your patient for CBI, or continuous bladder irrigation, and it's at this point that you then want to consult urology. In addition to the management strategy that we di just discussed, we'll also want to just review what the admission criteria is for these patients. These criteria include things like hypotension, anemia, if the patient is anticoagulated, If the patient is thrombocytopenic, very old, and finally, if you can't irrigate to clear, just like we discussed in the management algorithm. One last thing we'll mention is a documentation pearl. So when you're documenting on these patients, you always want to be sure to mention in your MDM that you cannot rule out malignancy. Be sure to try your best to get this patient a urology follow-up so that they can get a cysto as an outpatient if the patient is going to be discharged home. And that's it. So hopefully this lecture helped you develop an approach to the patient with gross hematuria Hopefully the management algorithm helps you appropriately consult urology. And hopefully this lecture will help you determine who needs to be admitted versus who can be safely discharged home. Thanks for watching.